Hi and welcome back to Switch and Lever. I'm not even going to make any excuses for this video. I love maps, and my walls have been too long without one. But what fun is a map if you can't mark where did you come from, where did you go, where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe. So follow along as we make a corkboard map so you can all pin your favorite places. But wait a minute, I hear you say. Cork is so expensive. Indeed it is, if you want to buy cork on a roll, that is. Especially for a bigger map like we're making, it's going to set you back a little. Let's go to IKEA and think it over. Maybe there's a solution to this issue among the Lingondrika and the meatballs in the restaurant. Of course! We can just buy some IKEA cork placemats. They're just a few bucks for a pack of four. While they're a bit thin for cork board, you can always double them up for a thicker board. Now to find a way out of this home decoration maze. Unfortunately the cork isn't ideal for a bigger board right out of the package. First thing we need to do is to cut off the rounded corners so there are no gaps between the cork pieces when we patch them together. Since cork is a somewhat floppy material, we next need to attach them to something more sturdy. Use a piece of thin plywood or masonite and spray glue the cork pieces down to stick. Don't do the same mistake as me and try to glue the non-smooth side of the masonite. It will just absorb the glue and nothing will really stick. Flip it over and restart. Once you've done the first layer, add another layer, but overlap the seam so there's nowhere one could stick a pin between the two full layers of cork. Again, since the cork is quite floppy, you may want to weigh down what you glue as you're working. Finally, you're going to have to weigh it down with something large and flat to distribute pressure all over the cork, and leave it until the glue cures. When the weights come off, you may have found that some parts have shifted slightly, and for some reason expanded. So curse to yourself quietly while you break out your carpet knife and start trimming the edges to match the size of the underlying board. To make sure nothing will separate over time or if the glue should fail that nothing will lift, tape all the seams with wide clear packing tape to hold it down. Also, if you tape the fuzzy backside of the masonite with duct tape, you can fold over the edges of the clear tape and it will actually stick. The reason for using clear tape as opposed to duct tape on the front is in case the paper map which will be applied is slightly translucent. This way the cork will be even all over and no taped seams can be seen through the map. Now we're getting to the most exciting part since the meatballs, choosing your map. There are many maps out there and you can sure just buy a map to fit your board, but there are also other ways to obtain a map which will suit just you. The best location you can find maps online is no doubt the David Rumsey map collection. It allows you to browse more than 30,000 maps from all over the world and through many ages of time. It also allows download of most of the maps in very high resolutions, which is suitable for poster printing, even at the demanding quality required for maps. Pause this video, have a browse, realize you spent the entire night looking at maps, come back to this video and finish it before going to bed. It's worth it, trust me. Now with your map in hand we can move on. You may want to protect the actual surface of your map a bit more by using sticky back plastic. Since I don't particularly like the look of shiny maps, I chose to cover my map in matte plastic. You can get this kind of plastic from most stationery or craft stores. It can be a bit tricky to apply, especially to something this big. The best way I've found is to remove the backing from one edge of the plastic and attach just that edge of your poster. Then slowly work yourself down the poster, slowly removing the backing from the rest of the plastic, while pushing from the center out to push out as many air bubbles as possible. 
Once the poster is all stuck down to the plastic, you can bring back your cork board and match it up with your map. Fold up the edges of the sticky back plastic to the back of the board to attach the poster securely. Some bubbles are unfortunately unavoidable, but they're not the end of the world. Since paper isn't entirely airtight, most bubbles can simply gently be pushed out. The more persistent bubbles may require puncturing to give a small hole for the air to escape from. Though this puncture mark won't be visible once the bubble is squeezed out. Almost done now. Of course, you could stop here and just hang your corkboard, but wouldn't it look much nicer in a frame? Yes, yes it would. I simply taped the board onto the frame with framing tape. It's definitely enough to hold it in place, but if you're worried, you could always add a few small nails as well. To hang it, just run a thin wire from each side of the frame and attach it securely. Here we're using a staple gun, but you could just as well use nails instead. Just be careful not to damage the frame. All that's left now is to hang it up and start pinning all those places you've been or plan to go to, or whatever else your imagination can think of. I hope you enjoyed the video. While dreaming of new places to travel, why don't you check out some other videos from Switch and Lever. Also be sure to subscribe and follow Switch and Lever on social media. There's new stuff on Instagram almost daily. Until next time!